key ally for the United States, but it's both a potential target of North Korea and a strategic canary in a coal mine, if you will. After all, Japan is the last line of defense between North Korea and the United States. But here's the question. Does North Korea even have the technology to hit a target accurately thousands of miles away? Joining me now from our bureau in Washington, D.C., chairman and founder of the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance, Ricky Ellison. Uh, Ricky, many estimates out there of what uh, North Korea and Kim Jong-un can and cannot do with its arsenal vis-a-vis -vis, uh, missiles. What's your best guess? Do, what is in their arsenal, first of all? And, and second of all, do they have the capability to hit a target thousands of miles away accurately? Well, they definitely have the capability to strike uh, U.S. territory from Guam, Hawaii, Alaska, in the majority of our country. We don't know the accuracy of that, but I don't think it's about accuracy because they can detonate a nuclear weapon without going into reentry uh, capability to, to do a, uh, an effect that would damage uh, lots and lots of people, et cetera, on that. Okay. Uh, there is some confirmation, uh, public confirmation this week about North Korea hitting some key thresholds. Um, and this would be pertaining to their nuclear capabilities. And as it turns out that apparently these thresholds were hit uh, during the time of the Obama administration, but they just weren't made public. But in, in particular, uh, we're talking about miniaturizing nuclear uh, warheads. That's number one. But we do know and have confirmation that they have short and medium range ballistic missiles that can hit uh, South Korea and Japan, intermediate range ballistic missiles, which can hit Guam, and intercontinental range missiles, which can apparently hit the United States. But they also have a uh, submarine based capability. So can they put nuclear warheads on virtually all of those? Uh, we believe they can. Uh, they, they've had, I think, four or five nuclear tests over the last couple of years. But most importantly, they've had 80, 80 uh, ballistic missile tests since he's become uh, the premier of North Korea and over close to 60 this past year. So their advancement of their technology and their ballistic capability is, is excelling. You're seeing new technologies such as submarine-launched missiles on land, on mobile systems, air launch. That There's no way that country could do this or could create this kind of uh, capability on their own. They're getting help. And some of those systems are very similar to what the Chinese are doing and the Russians are doing. So they definitely have capability. There's up to probably over 20 to 30 nuclear weapons that they've already created. We've seen the actual missiles and the payloads that they can, they can carry those nuclear weapons in. They've demonstrated reentry vehicle. They've demonstrated lofted capability at speeds and angles going back into the reentry that you would with an ICBM capability. There's no way our country cannot ignore this or cannot acknowledge the fact that they have nuclear ICBM capability and ballistic missile intermediate range and medium range capability to strike the United States of America, Hawaii, Guam, Korea, and Japan. Now, you said something very interesting there. You said they wouldn't be able to do this without help. Uh, that's a backdoor way of saying China, I believe. And, and I know that there is some evidence from some of these tested missiles in the past that, yes, Chinese technology has been on board, correct? Absolutely. I think there was a New York Times piece last month that went through all the small products that, that, were, that were on this missile that were Chinese-based. But it's more, it's more than China. It's, it's Russia as well. You got to remember, this is a very poor country. The industrial base and the engineering might is not even close to anything that we do or any of the major countries in the world. They've got to have outside engineering and support to do this, whether that's Iranian, whether that's Russian or Chinese, they are getting that. And you've got to question yourself, too, how, why would China have an unpredictable leader with a nuclear capability, 20, 30 nuclears that can hit, hit their capital, hit Peking, without their control of it? It is definitely a Chinese position. And if you step back a little bit, you look at both China, Russia, and um, North Korea moving this thing forward, I think, to try to push the United States off the peninsula. That's, that's the end goal. It seems that, that they're going to keep antagonizing, and China's going to continue to support North Korea's efforts until they get a negotiation point where they can start negotiating withdrawal of U.S. forces 
from the peninsula. The theater is replete with missile defense. Uh, uh, that, by that, I mean uh, the Korean Peninsula. Uh, South Korea has missile defense. Uh, Japan has missile defense, but specifically South Korea and the THAAD system. Um, it, it, it's important because it's not only missile defense, but also, also a communication system that alerts the United States of what could be a pending disaster, but the United States itself, uh, we have a missile defense system, but do you believe that it's a missile defense system that is robust enough? In other words, we don't have the Star Wars that Ronald Reagan uh, envisioned, although we, we could have it, and we don't really have a, a, an iron shield that, say, for example, Israel has. Don't we need something like that? Where's the Congress on this? Well, we did a, a historical intercept on May 30th, the first ever in the history of the world of an ICBM intercept with our initial capability, a GBI ground-based interceptor out of Vandenberg, California. We will have 44 of those missiles that will be in place by the end of the year. Korea, North Korea does not have the numbers right now to overwhelm and overmatch our 44 missiles and their capability. So we have multiple missiles that we can fire at their singular targets. That's a matter of time and when they start mass producing that capability that we have to enlarge our capacity and we have to get our systems better in discrimination so we don't have to fire as many at one single interceptor. I so that, that we, we are safely assured today right. that we can completely defend ourselves in Guam, Hawaii, in the continental United States. Japan and Korea are different stories because they're overmatched by the thousands of missiles that, that, that the Koreans have that could, uh, if, if need be, if they decided to be, could, could rain on both those countries. And be very careful because some of these missiles are defensive and some of them are offensive. Some of them are intended to defend our allies and some of them are intended to defend us. And if it ever comes down to war, obviously we're going to have to be making some very, very crucial and, and potentially deadly choices. Ricky, thank you.